You didn't like my dad. My dad was um, a retired Marine Corps Lieutenant Colonel, a nice, mellow guy. <laughs> I come from a military family. My father, uh, he was in World War II. My grandfather was in the Army during World War I. I enlisted in the Army out of high school, 1973. I just missed going to Vietnam, but I was in time for our country's war on drugs. <laughs> All right. Technically, I fought for the other side, but. <laughs> Full disclosure, I, I'm, I'm what they call, I've been clean and sober for 31 years. Clean and sober. I'm very proud of that. I stopped drinking in the early 80s when discos were popular. <laughs> Discos helped people of my generation stop drinking because they had carpeting on the floor and for sound insulation, they'd put the same carpeting on the walls. Now think about it, carpeting on the walls of a bar, how could you tell when you were falling down drunk? I'll be right back. I, I got a little help down here. A little help. Quit kicking, man. I'm a veteran, back off. My father's generation is called the greatest generation. Generation that fought and won World War II. And, and, they were, and when you think about it, they were great at winning World War II. They literally saved the world. But it doesn't mean they were great at everything else they did for the rest of their lives. They were human beings. They were flawed. And let's be honest, the skills that they needed to crush fascism didn't necessarily transfer to raising a little boy. <laughs> Combat reflexes, necessary in battle, unnecessary at dinner. <laughs> it's dinner, drop a potato, pick it up. Don't jump on it and tell the kids to run. <laughs> Give you an idea of my father's reflexes. I once spilled a glass of milk at dinner. My dad yelled at me, before the milk hit the table. You gotta visualize, the milk is literally arcing in the air. Like a drill instructor, he's out of his chair, in my face. What the hell you think you're doing there, bonehead? Bonehead, you build your glass of milk. I've had it with you, boy. Oh, I got my eye on you, boy. Drop down, give me 10 push-up. I said, get out of that high chair. Look at you. Look at you. A baby. You're a little baby. I might have been the only guy to enlist in the Army who already had PTSD. I've got a son, by the way. i got a son. And uh, we always communicated much better than my father and I did. When my son turned 17, he got his driver's license. And we signed what was called at the time a SAD contract, uh, Students Against Driving Drunk. And here was the deal. If he was to take the car, say, and he went any place and had anything to drink, he made a promise, an oath, to not get in the car but to call me on the phone. And apparently, according to the contract we had signed, I was gonna be more than happy. <laughs> to get out of bed at 3.30 in the morning, and go out and drag his little drunken butt back home. <laughs> well, what the heck, I was going to Walmart anyway. Come on. Come on. I'm just glad he trusted me. That's all a parent really wants. A parent, you just want your children to trust you enough that if they ever have a real problem in their life, they'll come to you with their problem. I don't think I could have ever called my father drunk when I was a teen. I don't see that phone call to the colonel. I, I do not see it. Oh, Dad, I need you to come pick me up because even if I was sober, I couldn't get the car out of the pool. <laughs> Then you hang up the phone and wait for the arrival of Mr. Understanding. Ooh. He's gonna wanna give me a hug. And how long would I wait? With his reflexes, I wouldn't get the phone halfway to the hook before I saw him fishtailing around a corner, driving up in a classic 
American automobile, the Ford Country Square station wagon. <laughs> LTD, lunatics transportation device. <laughs> Cream colored tan trim, artificial wood paneling. Because in the 1960s in America, nothing showed good taste more than fake wood. <laughs> It was a great car. If you remember this car, it had three seats, had a front seat, had a back seat, and then there was a back back seat, see? A third seat in the rear that flipped up and faced out the back window. Now, the front two seats were reserved for the regular family, see? And the rear flip-up seat was for like mutant children, pets with intestinal disorders, and the visiting grandmother. Nan is always in the back, passed out, because they had the rear window down about an inch and a half. She'd been breathing exhaust fumes all morning. <laughs> and then there's a seven-year-old boy flipping the bird out the back window. <laughs> well, that was me. Because I was in the back seat with my grandmother because I love my grandmother. Whenever I see young people today, I always hope they have at least one grandparent in their life. Because grandparents love you like your parents cannot because they don't have to live with you i could do nothing wrong in my grandmother's eyes everything i did my nana would she'd praise me oh look at that look at that i never thought of actually taping the bowl right on the cat look at that oh you're a clever boy you're right that way the food is always there My Nana told me, she told me the first joke I ever laughed at. This joke is over 130 years old. If you have grandchildren in your life, you take this joke to them. If they're between five and 10, they'll think you're the greatest comedian in the world. My Nana said, be happy God put the crack in your rear end vertical. Because <laughs> if it wasn't when you went down a slide, it would go. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. It's a 130 year old joke. And it's still quite effective. It really is. My Nana, my Nana used to come and visit us every summer for 10 months. Now, we didn't have a guest room in our house. Growing up in a small town, I didn't know anybody had a guest room. What we had was my room. So when my Nana would visit, she'd get my bed, and I'd sleep on the floor next to her in a sleeping bag. And my favorite day uh, was Sunday. We'd get up before the rest of the family. First, she'd wake up, see? And then she'd wake me up. Technically, she stepped on me. <laughs> we'd go downstairs and watch television. I loved watching TV with, TV with my grandmother. Uh, we each had a favorite show. She loved professional wrestling. True story. She, she loved to wrestle. His name was Bruno San Martino. And um, my, favorite my favorite show was the old time gospel hour. Because my dream as a child was to be a minister. I wanted to spend my life standing in front of hundreds of people <laughs> preaching the truth. <laughs> and this is the closest I will ever get. <laughs> But both of these shows were on at the same time. So what would we do back in the day? We, we couldn't record one to watch later. What we would do is we would share, right? You watch a little one show, commercial would come on, you flip the channel, watch a little of the other show, you end up flipping back and forth, and in my child's mind, the two shows would combine, they'd become the professional gospel wrestling hour. <laughs> Friends, I want to remind you the Peace Crusade will be coming to Atlanta this Sunday afternoon at the War Memorial Auditorium. <laughs> where I, the Thunderbolt, will destroy the Gospel Choir. <laughs> Featuring Sister Ginny Hansen and my brother, the Terminator. <laughs> you people, you've seen me before. I've broken men's legs. I have made the crippled walk. <laughs> One thing you can count on, someday the heavens will open up an eye. The thunderbolt will pile drive nature boy into the depths of Hades. <laughs> so be there on Sunday, bring a friend and I'll kill him. <laughs> hey, thank you.
Hey, did you know that Dry Bar Comedy has their own app? Download it right now to watch, save, and share clips. And watch my whole special.